It's a great view of Swindon from up here in Old Town. I'm Paul Lancaster and for many years I produced Swindon's local channel on Swindon Cable. One of our popular features was to look back at local history, comparing pictures of Swindon from the past with those of present day. Well, we thought in this Swindon's 175th anniversary year, it would be fitting to do exactly the same. So this time we're turning back the clock 31 years to 1985. The clips were recorded as part of Swindon Cable's news programme, Focus on Swindon, that reported on news and events all over the town. In this programme, we'll be remembering the Even Swindon Junior School in Robbourne. We're off to Fleet Street, fittingly, to remember the old Sir Daniel Arms pub. And there's a royal visitor in Curtis Street at the home of the Samaritans. So, enjoy a look back at a changing Swindon. And do remember at the end, please like, comment or share. We'd like to hear your views. So, here we go. Let's turn the clock back 31 years and take a look at Swindon through the years. Delving into the Swindon Cable Archive, we're turning the clock back to 1985 and discovering forgotten sites in a changing town. Another look at Swindon through the years. Our journey starts near the town centre in Curtis Street. Our 2016 view shows a building that was offices but now converted to flats. The street once housed a collection of much-loved local businesses. Records, clothes and DIY materials were once up for sale in this busy street. The shops were still there trading in 1985 when these views were taken, but they weren't destined to last much longer. Today it's impossible to spot any trace of these local shops, the whole block now taken up with a building known as Curtis Court. Even the Fort Cortina estate points to a different era. It's another example of offices replacing the once thriving local shops, although now even the offices have gone. As the sign above the shop clearly states, it's all changed for Curtis Street in our modern 2016 view. We now head into Fleet Street. Today it's a mainly pedestrianised part of town that's become known for late night drinking. However, back in 1985 it was very different. Traffic still flowed along this busy street and the pub culture was yet to take over. Our view shows a car park on the left, once the temporary home of a Saturday market before it moved to Greenbridge. On the right is the co-op's town centre store. By 2016, there are many changes. The car park is no more. The site was redeveloped with new pubs and the new Sir Daniel Arm stands to the left along this whole part of Fleet Street. The building to the right is now home to the Wilkinson store. The traffic has gone, diverted around the rear of the development. Back in 1985, the area was in a poor state and longing for some TLC. The original Sir Daniel Arms, named after the Great Western Railway's locomotive engineer Daniel Gooch, was a relatively small pub in a busy street. The neighbours have already moved out and the windows are boarded up, ready for redevelopment. It's tired looking but still has character in our view from 31 years ago. The same location today is part of the new Sir Daniel Arms. The new pub on a much larger scale sees the entrance move to one end of the building facing the town centre. The view from the same spot today is far less appealing though than that from years gone by. This is the building that was next to the original Sir Daniel Arms. Its days are numbered, the shops are shut up and the customers long gone as it awaits its fate and demolition. 
The View today shows part of the new St Daniel Arms. Ironically, it was a local pub. Now it's part of a huge national chain belonging to Weatherspoons. Thankfully though, the name remains, and inside there are many references to both Daniel Gooch and the Great Western Railway. The building at number 2 Fleet Street was swept away as part of the redevelopment. Today this is where the diverted road that runs alongside the Sir Daniel Arms joins at the junction with Fleet Street and becomes Farringdon Road. Of course it forms part of just one of the town's notorious one-way systems. This was the original Salvation Army Citadel Church in Fleet Street. This was their home until they moved out in 2007. The unusual building was built for the Salvation Army, but they found it increasingly difficult to use when late night drinkers were out in force. Some even used the doorway as public toilets. Today, there's an air of irony as our view shows that the site of the former building that faced John Street is now one of those many pubs that were sited in this part of town. It's recently changed hands but is still known as the Groves Company Inn, the Salvation Army having moved to a new base in Devizes Road. The unusual brick-built, castle-fronted building was demolished when the modern pub was built. Traffic still flows on this part of Fleet Street into the John Street car park. Just around the corner from the original Sir Daniel Arms was Simpsons Printers, a family-run business still in operation in our 1985 view. To the left was the building that housed the function room known as the Sheraton Suite. Upstairs, of course, was the well-known local nightclub at the time, Destiny and Desire. It earned the nickname Desperate and Divorced. Today, the building has gone. Apartments are now housed in the blocks that stand on the same spot. Certainly many people were mourn the demise of the nightclub, being responsible for the start of many happy relationships around the town. However, the loud music and crowds of weekend revellers now long gone. Well, here's another of Swinon's demolished schools. The land's been cleared and the gates are locked. All traces have gone of this school in Robbourne. Of course, it's the vacant site of the Even Swindon Junior and Infant Schools. Here's the entrance on Hugh Street as we turn the clock back 31 years to 1985. There's snow on the ground in this view. In fact, Swindon Cable's cameras were there to report the school was shut as the toilets had frozen. 31 years later and just the railings are left. The junior school moved to a new location on Pasture Close in 1997. When the infant school moved out and merged to form a new primary school, it left the site free for redevelopment. And hopefully the toilets in the new school won't suffer the same problems. Today the site's been cleared, another Victorian building swept away with just memories that were once part of many youngsters' formative years growing up in the railway town. Despite calls for it to be preserved as part of any future development, the building was pulled down at the end of 2013 after a fire deemed it beyond economic repair. It's surely only a matter of time before this land sees a new use and a new building covering the site. Well, now something a little different. We're back in Curtis Street, and this is the shop and offices of the Samaritans in Swindon. As we turn the clock back 31 years to 1985. And there was a royal visitor in town. Through that same wooden door comes Her Royal Highness Princess Anne.
She opened the Samaritan Support Centre and shop in Curtis Street and hundreds of people turned out to get a glimpse of the royal visitor. She toured the premises and chatted to staff and volunteers who provided this important service back in 1985. Today, over 30 years later, the shop is still there providing the same support to people in need. It's one of the older charity shops in town and of course now there are many more representing almost all the major charities you can think of. I wonder how many youngsters today will remember the day they saw or even met the Queen's daughter in one of the town centre side streets. Usually the royal visitor prepares to leave after her visit and climbs behind the wheel of her British-built Reliance scimitar, driving herself to her next engagement. All in all, a memorable day for everyone in Curtis Street. Discovering forgotten sites in a changing town, delving into the Swindon Cable Archive for a look at Swindon through the years. Music